Okay, um, my name is John Hammack. I am a developer evangelist for Treasure Data. And uh, Treasure Data is a cloud analytics pipeline. Um, depending on who you ask, um, we are an American company headed by Japanese, but we actually are, have a bigger presence in terms of customers in Japan. Um, and those customers include, um, for example, advertising companies. We have gaming companies on board. We have companies that work with IoT data. Uh, and I guess I should step back a little bit and explain what exactly um, a cloud-based analytic pipeline does. Imagine if you're a company that collects data and wants to get insight from that data. If that's not completely cliche, it, it sounds like I'm getting, um, oh yes, I have to be back here. Sorry, imagine you're such a company that collects data and tries to get insight from that data. You might be getting data from IoT sensors, you might be getting it from servers or uh, from, from a game. Um, maybe your, your click-throughs or web logs or mobile, uh, you have a mobile application where you're trying to track how people are using your app. You're going to want to have um, a way to do four things. You're going to want to have a way to ingest that data into some kind of a system. Um, you're going to want to have a way to transport the data to uh, the place you're ingesting it and storing it, a way to do queries against those raw data sets, and then a way to export that data to any number of other systems where you can get real insights from it. Um, here are a few examples. Um, we can export our, our raw uh, sensor data or the data that we query into things like Marketo or Amazon Redshift, um, relational databases, visualization tools, business intelligence, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, we're able to uh, export the result there. Um, of course, it's a work in progress, and we're always adding more things all the time. But the point is you want to have a way to get this unstructured or this multi-structured data in somewhere, query it into the format you want, and put it into another tool where you can do analytics on. Um, the story started a few years ago when the founders of the company were actually developers of the logging framework called FluentD. I don't know if in this presentation I'm allowed to actually interact with the audience, but I'm going to anyway. How many of you guys have heard of or used FluentD? Got a few hands up. So you know that uh, FluentD is a unified logging layer. Um, back in the bad old days, and still in the present for some people, um, your logging story looks like a very complicated mess like you see here. Um, you're getting the data from somewhere. You, maybe you need a script to parse the data, another script to aggregate the data. Maybe you need another um, script to do um, pulling data from some other source. Um, and it's actually a software anti-pattern that we fix with FluentD. Um, so instead of having um, the anti-pattern where it's point-to-point -point integration, we make basically a common interface and then um, the order of complexity goes down quite a bit. You have a common interface. You have in, uh, input plugins that work with all the places you can get the data from or the log files from. And then you have output plugins also developed by the community. Remember, this is an open source thing that you can export the data to any number of destinations. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to give a little presentation of how FluentD looks on uh, Docker containers. FluentD is now integrated with Docker. So we're going to look at that. And then in a few minutes, um, I'm going to show you what a result output to Amazon Redshift might look like. So um, let's look at the configuration file, which is um, um, tdagentconf. I know all you Vim people out there are going to get on me about this, but um, hey, man, it's all about choice, you know? So let's look at our um, comp file. And as you can see in here, um, the way this is, is we have um, how we're getting the data from the source. Um, you can see my API key for treasure data in there. Um, we're going to pull the data basically from, um, from our Docker log file. We're going to create a table on treasure data. Um, and we're going to flush the buffer every five seconds, which basically pushes the data there. Um, so let's get out of here and actually have a quick demo. Now, what this actually does is we're creating a Docker container. We're going to name it test4. And we're going to create um, our table in treasure data. 
Um, we're going to use uh, uh, FluentD, obviously, as a logging driver here. Now that FluentD is integrated with Docker, you just um, run the parameter uh, log uh, dash dash log dash driver equals FluentD. That's how you do it. Um, we're going to create a table with the name of our, um, of our Docker container, um, which in this case is going to be test4. So let's run that. And now we're in. And so let's do some... Uh, Let's do some nice, useful things. Hi there, heavy bit. Um, we're going to say echo how much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck particle board. And the answer is none, of course. Uh, great. So that was fun, wasn't it? Um, oops, I made a mistake. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's get out of there. Um, and let's just let's get out. Let's exit. Uh, exit again. Oh, we want to exit again. Right. And then what we've actually done um, is we've ingested the data into treasure data. Um, can we see that up there OK? So we've created a table called test4. And we've, um, we've actually ingested those console events into that. So let's run a quick query on treasure data to see what we have. And I've actually done this before, so I'm cheating a little bit. But you can see basically how this works. Is that we have basically um, the commands that we just typed at the console in our Docker container. And this is actually incredibly useful because when you... Um, when you have things running on Docker containers, you're supposed to be able to initiate those and kill those. Um, and if you don't log things, for example, this way or in any other way, um, you're going to have no way of really knowing what happened during the lifetime of that container, which can be as little as a few seconds. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Let's look at another scenario. So I've got some data here that I've pulled down from a Postgres RDS instance that I've set up on Amazon. Um, it is the DVD rental of the infamous Sakula database, which I have up and running on my, my RDS instance. Um, and I'm going to query that data, and we're going to put it in, into Amazon Redshift. And the point is that you can use treasure data not only from pulling the logs out, querying it again into the format you want, but then we can put it into any variety of destinations, and that's what we're going to demonstrate right now. So um, this is a trippy little visual that I'm going to show you, um, how it looks like. So we're pulling our events um, that can be in a dynamic format, and we're basically putting them into a fixed one. Um, so that's how that looks. Let's have a look at also how it looks. So. Great. So I've got my address uh, database that I pulled down. And you can see the fields in the database. Now, if I run this query, you're going to be able to see the results in Redshift. We're going to pull down 10 records. We're running the query. And you can see, um, you can see the MapReduce job running here in the background. Um, what you can actually do when you're running the query is you can put um, insert the, the word, uh, the keyword, explain um, before the actual um, query, which we're running in Hive, incidentally. Um, and you can see the actual uh, parameters that are being pa passed to the MapReduce job. So you can see how the job breaks down. So this is what we've got out of our database. Let's have a look at it on Redshift. This is always a nervous moment, you know, because you wonder, like, is everything going to be behaving itself? Is it the demo effect? No, we, it worked. You see, so now we're querying the data on our Amazon Redshift um, instance directly. So that is, um, in a nutshell, the kind of things you can do uh, with a data analytics pipeline. It's a really simple demo, but I hope you can kind of extrapolate from that and, and start to imagine the possibilities of the kinds of things that you can do. And again, I'll, I'll go back to this little visual in the beginning. Um, and I want to say that I'm actually here for a couple of things. Um, of course, uh, I want to make this video and to talk to you, so if anyone's interested in a Treasure Data demo, 
um, reach me, at, reach out to me, and I'll I'll get you, um, you know, up and running with a demo. As a developer evangelist, I'm also looking for people that I can do co-blogs with. So if you're integrating with Amazon, or if if you want to do an integration with us, we can do a co-blog together. I'm also looking for speakers um, to come to our meetups. We have a Silicon Valley data engineering meetup that's growing. It's a big group. We're getting some really good speakers in there. We just got Eric Sommer from Rokana, the guy who wrote Hadoop operations in there a couple of weeks ago. We're looking for speakers. We're also looking for meetups for, for people like me um, to speak at as well. And of course, if you just want to do coffee, that's another possibility as well. Uh, I am John at treasuredata.com. I am Reichsband on Twitter. And um, feel free to check out some very informative articles on Amazon Redshift, on ingesting data from Amazon S3 into Treasure Data, um, how to easily ingest uh, data into Amazon Redshift without too much trouble. Um, it's all on blog.treasuredata.com. Of course, you can come to www.treasuredata.com as well and and see the whole thing for yourself as well. So thank you very much.